Hi, and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about variance and standard deviation. Um, so, this is a repetition from the last movie about expected value. Uh, we had an example with the card game, where if you draw a 7, you won 2000 Swedish kroner, and if you draw any other card, you lost 100. Uh, and the expected value was uh, computed given by the formula here. So, first you were supposed to take the probability uh, that event 1 happened, which in our case was that the 7 was drawn. Uh, then you were going to multiply it by the outcome if you would draw a 7, which you find here. And then you would add the probability of the second event, which was uh, that any other card is drawn, which was 48 divided by 52. And then multiply it by the outcome uh, which occurred in case you draw something else than a 7, which was minus 100. And we found that this expected value was 61.54 Swedish kroner. But we also observed that the only two possible outcomes are that either you win 2000 or you lose 100. So this expected value was, it could never happen, I mean, uh, in the, when we play the game. But it was instead the average if you play the game many, many times. Okay. Uh, we also had this Pn times Xn in the formula. And the n simply stands for the total number of uh, different events we have. Since we only had two in this case, it meant that the formula actually ended over here. Um, but otherwise, I mean, these three dots also means that you should add the third event, uh, the probability of the third event times the outcome of the third event, plus the probability of the fourth event times the outcome if that event happens, and so on, in case you have more events. Okay, so let's take a different card game. The same rules apply. But in this case, if you draw a 7, you win 122,000 kroner. And if any other card is drawn, you lose 10,100 kroner. It turns out that even in this case, the expected value is exactly the same. It's 61.54. And I'll leave it as an exercise for you to um, check that. Okay, so let us compare the two games. They have the same expected value. But, I mean, it's very obvious that they are different games. In one, you risk losing 100 kroner, which might not be so bad. In the other, you risk losing 10,000 kroner. And since you <coughs> more often are losing than winning, if you only can play it once, at least I would choose to play the one uh, where I only risk losing 100 kroner. So, one thing that we might need uh, to like evaluate games, we would like to mean what a normal deviation from the expected value is. So, in both cases, the expected value was 61.54, but in both games, that's I mean, that number could never happen. Either you won a lot of money, or you lost a little bit less. Uh, so we would like to know what is a normal deviation from this expectation. Um, and one common measure, or the most used measure maybe, is called the variance of a random variable. Uh, we denote it as VAR of X, which then stands for variance of X, or we use this Greek letter sigma, and then you write it as sigma squared of x, or possibly just write it as sigma squared with an x uh, subscript, or just simply as sigma squared, and then you haven't defined which random variable you're talking about. Um, I'm actually going to use that simple notation, uh, and the reason I do that is it makes the formulas easier to follow in the video, but it doesn't really matter, I could as well have used this one, or that one, or even uh, the var x notation, it's just to make it easier for you to see. Um, we also have something else which is called standard deviation, and I will get back to what the difference between these two are in a moment, uh, or actually why we have them, I will come back to. Uh, this is denoted as sigma of x, or maybe a sigma with an x subscript, or just sigma. Uh, and again, this is the Greek letter sigma, it's not just some strange 6 or so. Uh, sometimes you also write it with letters like SD, is then short for standard deviation, or just SD. Standard deviation. Okay, uh, sometimes in finance we talk about the volatility of, for example, stock returns. And the volatility corresponds to the standard deviation, and the symbol that we use then is also sigma. Okay, um, so how do we compute the variance? Well, this is the formula, uh, the one that starts from here. And it's fairly simple to the one we used for uh, expected value. You take the probability of each event times some outcome of that event, 
And the difference now is that we're actually going to subtract the expected value and then also square it. Um, so the PJ stands for the probability that event J happens. So for example, the probability that we get a 7 when we draw uh, a card from a deck. Um, XJ, just as in the expected value, it stands for the outcome in case this event happens. And this, again, is the expected value then of X, so the expected value if you play the game many, many times. Um, you can write it on a slightly larger form, uh, which might make it easier to follow. Then X1 is the outcome if event 1 happens. P1 is the probability that event 1 happens, so there should be a T here. Um, and E of X is the expected value, uh, which we then subtract. So if we take this, just look in these parentheses, we take the outcome of an individual event, then we subtract the expected value. So that's actually like a deviation from the expected value. You know that in, on average I'm supposed to get 61.54 Swedish kroner, but in case of event 1 I actually get 2000. Then we can see how far off from the expected value is this outcome. Um, and then we square it to make all deviations. Uh, well, if we didn't square it then all deviations would cancel out. So we, may, uh, we take the square to make all deviations a positive number, even if they are lower. Okay, so let's compute the variance of the first card game then. Um, so the expected value was 61.54 and we needed that here in the formula. Um, we are supposed to start by taking the probability of event 1. Event 1 is that a 7 is drawn, so we take the probability 4 divided by 52. Then we are supposed to multiply it by and remember the parentheses here, uh, we're going to take the outcome of event 1, which is then 2000. We, uh, we're going to subtract the expected value, and that we have here, it's 61.54. And then, don't forget to take the square as well, so we add a 2 there. Then we're going to add the probability of event 2, which is 4 to 8 divided by 52. Uh, and multiply it by the outcome of, in case of any other card, minus 100 minus the expected value, which still is 61.54. And again, don't forget to square this uh, parenthesis. And we find that the variance is 313,136.1 Swedish kronor squared. So that's a very odd unit. I mean, what is a squared Swedish krona? Um, I don't really know, and I don't think anyone really knows what that means, that's why we usually are going to use the standard deviation instead of the actual variance. Uh, and again, this PNXN part is only if we have more events than two, then you would go on adding them in the same manner. Okay, um, so the standard deviation, how do we find that one? Well, it's actually fairly simple to find the standard deviation once we have found the variance, because the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So, we take the square root of the variance, and then we get the standard deviation to approximately 560 Swedish kronor. And the good thing about standard deviation is that if our outcomes are measured in Swedish kronor, then the standard deviation will also be measured in Swedish kronor. If the outcomes would be in percentage, such as a 10% return on a stock, then the standard deviation would also be expressed as a percentage return. Um, and basically this means that it's very common to have deviations from the expected value of 61 that are plus or minus 560 kroner away. So, uh, for example, the outcome of minus 100, which is the most common one, uh, it is less than 560 Swedish kroner, uh, it's, less, it's a smaller deviation than 560 kroner away from the expected value of 61. So this is like, this captures, if you look, uh, start from the expected value and then you go plus minus the standard deviation, you will capture most of the events that happen, the most probable ones at least. And in this case that's drawing something else than a 7. Um, okay, let's compute the variance of the sta uh, and the standard deviation of the other game. You would use the same formula and do the exact same steps. And you would find that this variance would be 1 billion, 200 million and some more. And again, the unit would be squared Swedish kroner. The standard deviation is again found by taking the square root of the variance. And we do that to find that the standard deviation in this case is 34,641 Swedish kroner. 
So we can now see that the standard deviation, which is then a measure of how much uh, the normal outcome differs from the expected value, is much larger in this case. And of course, we already knew that when we saw the outcomes, because the most probable uh, outcome is that we, you lose 10,000. And again, this is covered, this is within the range uh, if you go from the expected value of 61 plus minus the standard deviation of 1,000. Then this outcome uh, ends up within that interval. Okay, so variance and standard deviation actually measures the same thing. They both want to measure how far away from the expected value uh, you usually end up or what's common. But the problem with variance is that it is expressed in strange units, such as, for example, squared kronor. Uh, and the standard deviation, then, is the measure that we usually use. Uh, it measures how big, like a normal or a standard, deviation is from the expected value. And of course, you can have uh, deviations which are larger. Uh, so the good outcome in this game, the plus 2000 or 122,000, it was never within the range of one standard deviation, but uh, still the standard deviation is a measure of how big the deviations usually are. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much and I hope this helps you.